So I want to welcome everybody to Integrating Culture into Recreation. Um, this has been a great work, uh, webinar to put together because I find it so important. And um, also, with my work across Canada with the different communities, it has been coming up more and more where the youth are, are wanting to, to know more about their culture. And uh, so this is an important topic today. I want to thank everyone for joining us. Um, before we begin, though, I'd like to acknowledge the Algonquin people on whose territory I am right now. And uh, I want to give thanks for the opportunity to, to create and deliver these webinars. And uh, I appreciate the fact that people are listening to them and walking away with ideas, inspiration, and possibly motivation to continue with their work in helping communities. Um, I'd like to take a minute to mention the families that were affected with the tornado in uh, Oklahoma a couple of days ago. I think that we should send them good thoughts um, because of the devastation and what they're dealing with. Um, I would say that these events remind us of how important it is to make the best of every breath and every step we're able to take, and it validates the work that we're doing. On that note, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Isabel Obey. I'm the president and founder of Native Way Training Services. Uh, we're a business who specializes in creating, adapting, and delivering health, fitness, and sport training resources in both English and French for First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. Um, we've created the six-day Aboriginal Community Warrior course, which is a fitness certification course that we're giving across Canada. And it combines Aboriginal sport development and the Everybody Gets to Play Community Mobilization Toolkit. To put together these webinars, we need a team. So I'd like to invite Jennifer Pelte to speak about Lynn, Lynn's um, <laughs> the Leisure Information Network's role in uh, producing the webinars. Thanks, Isabel. So um, the Leisure Information Network uh, has worked on this special project in just uh, providing the technology side of the webinar, uh, as well as the um, development of the Northern Lakes website, which we will discuss further a little bit later on. Um, I know that uh, our manager, um, Sorry, would be would be happy to be here today with us, but unfortunately she's not able to join us. So Agnes sends her regards, and um, and I'll send it back to Isabel. Thanks. Excellent. I see Collins on the line. Is that our Colin from Queens? It is Colin from Queens. Unfortunately, Colin is overseas at a conference, so he's not able to join us over the telephone line today. Okay, excellent. So on that note, I will highlight Queens University and their role in this project. Um, they were a key com a partner in the Everybody Gets to Play workshop that we gave across Canada, and they were in evaluating the impact of the workshops and are still working at that. So we've asked them to be involved in uh, the webinars so that they could see uh, the, compare the effects on online training compared to the in-person training. They are gathering information after every webinar and during the webinar as well. And uh, they would greatly appreciate if you could participate because that helps us determine what communities need to, uh, in, in regards of support to, uh, to help their communities a little bit better. Um, if you participate in the evaluation, you have a chance to win a $25 gift certificate for Walmart. <laughs> so I strongly encourage you to help us and, and uh, fill out the questionnaires. Uh, lastly, but not least, uh, I'd like to highlight CPRA, which is Canadian Parks and Recreation Association. CPRA exists to build healthy communities and enhance the quality of life and environments for all Canadians through collaboration with our members and partners. Among their goals are to communicate and promote the values and benefits of parks and recreation, respond to the diverse and changing needs of members, and provide educational opportunities such as this one. I've been working with Canadian Parks and Recreation for Aboriginal Services um, for about two years now, a little bit over two years. And I have to say that it's a great organization and they really care about making a difference. As part of our presentation, oh, sorry, <laughs> let me introduce Jennifer Peltier. Jennifer? So Jennifer is our technical consultant. She's the one who's making sure that everything is going well on the webinar. Are you with us, Jen? 
I am. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, so today's a little difficult, right? I guess after the long weekend and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm here definitely. So just as a note, as we go through the uh, the presentation today, if you'd like to join us and uh, give us your take via telephone, please don't be shy. And uh, to unmute your phone lines, all you have to do is pound six. And then if you'd like to mute your phone lines, all you have to do is star six. Um, I know that Isabel definitely uh, enjoys chatting with, with folks on the other line, so please do not be shy and join us today and enjoy. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you so much, Jen. Yeah, we're off to a really fun start today. <laughs> it's only going to get better. Uh, so I'm going to highlight the format of the session. Uh, there will be delivery of information with some questions asked through polls, uh, evaluation after the information session, open discussion and sharing with participants. This is where uh, we'd really appreciate it if, if people would share what they're doing or some of the things that they would like more support with as well, or if they appreciated something with, from the webinar. Um, last poll questions evaluating the exchange as well. And a brief tour of the Northern Links website and all of its valuable resources. So to begin our presentation, we're going to highlight some of the service, services from CSEP.ca. Over the past webinars, uh, we did go over some of the physical activity guidelines. Now what I'd actually like to do is go over some of the, the evaluation forms that we should do. We should be giving our clients or anyone who participates in recreation prior to them participating. So the first one would be the Park Q and U. Many of the gyms or recreation uh, facilities will adapt this. They'll use all the questions on the Park Q to be able to hand over to new clients or people who want to participate in their services. And what that does is it's just an evaluation to make sure that people, that it's safe for them to start with exercise. So the, the physical activity ready, readiness questionnaire, the PARQ, it's a one-page form to see if you should check in with your doctor before becoming much more physically active. So it's a, a standard screening that people give to clients. The PARQ and U is used to as uh, used by CSEP certified personal trainers, and this one is just a little bit more in depth. It's a four-page form for pre-screening prior to physical activity participation and includes additional questions on chronic conditions for further probing by the CSEP CEP. And the PARQ, this version only may be used by CSEP Fright. We just mentioned that. We will move on. So all of these can be found at the CSEP.ca website. If you go under publications, then you'll be able to access these. And I would strongly recommend that to anybody who gives any type of recreation or physical activity program, that they download these and give them to every one of their participants. It's just an extra tool to make sure that people are safe and healthy, and, and it may uh, prevent further problems down the road. So the next part is the PARMEDX. So it's a physical activity readiness medical examination. So this one is a four-page physical activity specific checklist to be used by a physician with patients who have had positive responses to the PARQ or PARQ+. So that means that they've done the initial screening and they've answered all the questions, but they've answered yes to one or more of the questions that are on there. So at that time, you'd want to give them a PARQ, uh, a PARMEDX. Uh, so that they can go to their physician, the physician can uh, verify that they're not at risk for any injury or death <laughs> while they're participating in your program. The next one we have is the PARMEDX for pregnancy, which is the four-page guideline for health screening prior to participation in prenatal fitness, cl fitness class or exercise. And these are for use by healthcare providers and fitness professionals. I would strongly recommend that you give this to anyone who is pregnant and wants to do uh, activity. There's quite a few good guidelines there so that they know when to exercise. And uh, one of the things that many people don't know is that if a woman has been sedentary before getting pregnant, the first trimester is not the time to start. They need to wait until the second trimester to start physical activity. That doesn't mean that they can't start walking. Walking is beneficial at any rate, but they have to do it in a very gradual and moderate way. It's not the time to push. So again, this is you can find this form at the CSEP.ca uh, website under the resources. So poll number one, for those of you who don't have a computer, um, the first question is, have you ever incorporated culture into recreation? So the questions are yes, no, or no vote. 
and 100% answered. Uh, please rate your general knowledge of how to integrate recreation into uh, culture into recreation. Wow, we're really doing well today. <laughs> okay, so 100% people answered. Excellent. So we'll move on. So before we get started, I'd like to talk to you about culture and what that means. Um, when I was putting together this webinar, I spoke to quite a few colleagues of mine, and I did some internet search, and, and I thought it would be important to define what culture is. So one of the, the definitions that I found, the first one, was um, culture is the characteristics of a particular group of people defined by everything from language, religion, cuisine, social habits, music, and arts. I thought that was a great definition, but then I went further to find another one. So culture is a word for people's way of life, meaning the way they do things. Different groups of people may have different cultures. A culture is passed on to the next generation by learning. Where it, where, where it is, genetics are passed on by heredity. Culture is seen in people's writing, religion, music, clothes, cooking, and, and what they do. The concept of culture is very complicated, and the word has many meanings. So the word culture is most commonly used in these three senses. Excellence of taste in the fine arts and humanities, also known as high culture, an integrated pattern of human knowledge, belief, and behavior, and the outlook, attitudes, values, goals, and practices shared by society. Now this would be what we're going to be talking today. So for millennia, all indigenous peoples have developed a relationship with their environment that has sustained and nourished their bodies, fostered community relations, and strengthened their culture. Culture and recreation work in many ways to help build cohesive, empowered, and active communities. Combining these creates a winning solution to many of the health and social challenges our communities face today. Recreation is one of the best ways to get people to start working together towards a common goal where we don't talk about politics, hopefully, um, and we can have fun. So it, it's a roundabout way to get people to work together and, and start interacting in a way that is um, non-political, as I mentioned, non-judgmental. Um, and this is one of the most important things that we can give our communities today with everything that is going on at this point in time with the, the political aspects of the government, I don't know more. Um, our youth who are starting to ask more questions. Integrating the culture and bringing it back into physical activity is probably one of the best ways to make people feel good again about what they're doing. Manchester Metropolitan University's Arts and Health Program's research study found that painting, dance, music, and storytelling can measurably increase our psychological well-being and lower levels of anxiety and depression. Known as the Earth Keepers, indigenous peoples play a key role in conserving flora, fauna, and other biological resources. So adding these teachings to sport and recreation can only help in restoring balance in our communities. I, I, those who know me well know that I have a special place in my heart for the Inuit people. Um, the Inuit love competition in sport as much as anyone. Sports around the world unite people in friendship and friendly competition. In the case of Inuit games, these were born from two different needs. The first being a necessity to be strong, fit, and agile, which improved hunting and survivability in northern regions. The stronger and more fit you are, the better you are able to fight illness, traverse distances, and maintain mental clarity. The other need for many of the games were to keep us entertained during those long hours out on the land, especially during the periods of prolonged darkness. All of this information was found on the OttawaInuitChildrens.com website. I would strongly recommend that you go visit that website. The other thing that I would recommend is that you use uh, YouTube and uh, look for Arctic Games. You'll be able to uh, find all kinds of great games that the Inuit use to get their youth fit, healthy, and active. If a family was facing hard times due to food shortages, etc., keeping spirits up helped to get through difficult times. Some of these games offered a necessary distraction. I think that we could still use those today with, with the high suicide rates that we are experiencing right now. 
using the games to, to get people to start working together, feeling better, and changing their perception would be key. So in First Nations communities, traditional games and physical challenges were used to resolve conflict, whether it was between two individuals or nations. I think I mentioned this in another webinar, where if there was a conflict, as I mentioned, within uh, nations or individuals, the elders would uh, go into, uh, would, they would go together and consult and decide what kind of a challenge that they would uh, present to whoever was in the conflict. And then whoever won the challenge was the one who would win the conflict. That was just one of the ways it was used. So that was then. We now live in modern times with different circumstances. I found this quote as I was surfing the internet. Um, this is from Dan Henhock, who's from Six Nations. It's part of his thesis that he wrote in 2009. And the title is Aboriginal Participation in Sport. So what he said was, culture is dynamic. So it, it is no surprise that Aboriginal culture and practices in North America have changed over time and will continue to do, do so. Sport, along with its practices and our understandings of its meaning, offers a contemporary window into the tensions Aboriginal people negotiate between their indigenous culture and the dominant culture influences of modern North America. So what can we do today to integrate culture into recreation? Well, one of the things that we can do is we can talk to our elders and get them to tell us about some of the games that they played. We need to invite them to come and speak to the youth and tell them of their experiences and the things that they used to do when they were small. Our elders are a fading resource, and we need to get as much from them now before it's too late. The other thing that you can do is you can contact your community school and get collaboration for the kids to do a big traditional games project where they need to research their nations and other nations' traditional games and the meanings behind them. And the best part about this is that you can actually organize a traditional games day. And all the different grades will have to demonstrate some of the games to their students and perhaps other members of the community. So once upon a time when powwows were also times to trade your goods with other nations, they also traded games and songs. So this is something that we could do now as well. So if your community doesn't have many traditional games, you can invite another nation to come and share theirs in exchange for teaching them some of your cultural ways. When I was giving a workshop, and everybody gets to play workshop in Montreal, actually one of the northern communities had mentioned how they didn't have uh, many of the cultural teachings that uh, the elder from Gunawage was talking about and some of the songs and everything. And we had that discussion about how once upon a time nations used to trade things, so it, it's, they could still do that today. So there are now companies who specialize in training people to give traditional indigenous games as well. So one of those is um, the traditionalnativegames.org. Um, and this is a quote from their website. Traditional games, years of recovering native games have resulted in such remarkable wisdom about Indian cultures and their survival here in the Americas. In Montana, the International Traditional Games Society has quietly worked with traditionalists to recover native games. The recovery was shown, has shown preservation of spiritual ties to community, land, and place that was reflected through laughter, joy, and play. The recovery of a game, whether for adults or children, involved season, nature of place, values and purposes, and ties to honor and spirits. This will be a great opportunity to gain, understand, to gain understanding of the biology and neuroscience of survival that promotes community and good relationships relations, excuse me. Those are reasons why all of us are the last hominid standing. Cooperation and kinship is important. So I want to speak about somebody that I met last fall. His name is Kevin Sandy. And uh, he's on the call today, I hope. <laughs> um, I'm going to quote some of the things that he wrote in a pamphlet. He teaches lacrosse and uh, integrates culture into everything that he does. So his quote is, lacrosse is a medicine game given to the Onkohonwe, all nations, to assist with healing individuals and nations. It was given, I'm not going to pronounce this because I don't know how, um, for joy and amusement. The game is now the fastest growing team sport in North America and will continue to grow and expand beyond Iroquois communities. So at this time, I'm going to invite Kevin to actually come on the line if he's there. 
Kevin, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming. And I apologize for being late. I had technical difficulties. Um, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Can you give us, wow. Can you give us a brief introduction of who you are and what you can do and what you do? Sure. And Oscano and Nagonia Gaso Shwege and Nidwageno. I hope everyone is well. I want to assure you Watney, it's a beautiful day. I come from uh, Six Nations, the Grand River Territory. I come from the Cuban Nation Wolf Clan family. And what we do is is as I guess as a group, I work with a group of collective individuals, uh, guys and girls alike, and we actually are involved in planning, facilitating of uh, traditional games, um, the Wa'oga Jigwais lacrosse being one of them, and also athletic training, supporting communities with um, startup programs, uh, student athlete opportunities, and instructional clinics. And that's what we really do. Like we're a leader. I, I believe we're clearly a leader in terms of what we do. And the operative word that you're looking for before probably uh, Isabella was also Guayadiso, who was our creator. I think that's what I think that's the word that you were referring to. So uh, mm, that's right. Yeah, and and that's what we we really exist. Our whole our whole mission is really to respect and honor our games, and that's why we do what we do is because it's it's everything's intrinsically is within us, is within us, like all of our teachings, all of our ceremonies, all of our songs, all of our dances, and all of the, all of the activities that that we traditionally used to do still carry over into, into we'll say, contemporary society. And, and one of the big things is that we go out there and provide, I'll say, edu, edu awareness of, uh, what, of what some of those games are and in, in reviving them. Because in some communities, that we found, like in traveling throughout North America, we've been anywhere from Mi'kmaq communities to Yurok tribal nations in California, up in uh, geez, BC, down in the states, and kind of all over. So, what we what we found is, is there's just been, um, I guess, a, a loss of uh, what those games are. But when we actually talk to more and more people, some of the older people and people who have been around the community, that hey, I remember playing this. Hey, I remember playing that. I remember playing this. I remember playing that, and it's really cool that we're doing that. So that's just a brief introduction into into what we do. Mm. So that's awesome, Kevin. Thank you for sharing. So how long have you been doing this? It's uh, funny you ask that question. Uh, since time immemorial, <laughs> creation. <laughs> well, I can't know. Like literally, probably, probably all of our life, all of my life, and, and just in terms of in terms of what we do with our Odinashoni uh, program, we've been doing it for the past six years. I guess it's more of a formalized structure and more of a formalized setting and because we we go into schools uh, we work with recreation departments we work with first nations communities friendship centers uh, urban aboriginal groups and all oh, across clubs and it's it, and it's a whole we run the whole gamut I guess in terms of who we provide and well, for us it's really the young people kids are the, under the ages of uh, 17 and, and once they start walking and uh, can carry a stick in their hand or can do what they want to do, then then we try and work with them. So. Wow, that's excellent. And if I asked you, how important would you say it is to incorporate culture into recreation? <laughs> it's the essence of who we are. I, I, I really, I truly believe, in, and that's why I said our vision and mission is to respect and honor our games because from our games, uh, they were used for different purposes. Earlier you mentioned the whole aspect of uh, of settling disputes, like a peaceful means of settling disputes. That's why some of our games are still played to this day. And, and even our game that I can say that we that you currently know, not everyone now knows as lacrosse, that was one of its purest intentions was a peaceful means to settle disputes. And even when we go around and talk to communities and we talk to them about where the, where the roots come from. And, and to me, it's just it's so important, even in some of the artwork that 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 we do and, and sharing and trying to, we'll say, revive like wooden lacrosse sticks. Um, I just think about the project we're doing down at for Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board about um, hands-on, experiential. And I think it's really important that that individuals understand understand that we all have our own games. We all had a stickball game. If you go back and 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 look at, I'll say probably all of our all of our nations. 
that we all had games, and that's one of our whole intent is to bring back some of those games because some of these games are pretty they're pretty low cost. They mm-hmm. you don't have to go out and buy a lot of equipment. You can go in a bush and cut down a tree and play double bow and do your own kind of thing, and, and that's and that's the whole beauty of it. And I think it's just extremely important that that we help to instill that within the within the kids and the younger generation. And like just to quote like something from. When I was living in British Columbia, one of the one of the ladies out in um, in uh, Chiem, she's from Chiem and Seabird. She works at Seabird. She said we did a session out there, and perhaps the greatest result was in seeing the cultural values instilled in the youth, as well as increased confidence, self-esteem, health, and wellness. And if we can combine all of that, to me, then like we're totally, totally doing our, our jobs and, and transferring our knowledge, our gifts, our skills, and our abilities to the younger generation. To me, that's what it's all about. Absolutely, and I agree 200%. And I think it's a great venue for us to teach healthy competition because at this point in time, there's a lot of competition going on, but it's not always healthy. So through sport and, and recreation, it's probably the best way to, to be able to promote that and, uh, you know, and, and teach people how to win and how to lose, right? For sure, and and I just think about even this event that that our community is hosting this weekend in Six Nations of the Grand River Territory. Actually, my colleagues are on their way out now to the Buffalo Airport to pick up uh, Nadzitsaka uh, from uh, from Oregon, mm. and they're coming to our community. But they're coming to our community to play games, to be educated about a culture, teaching, ceremony, songs, and, uh, and also to participate in the in a, in a friendly, uh, we'll say fitness-oriented uh, uh, friendship tournament that we're hosting in our community. It involves 12 teams, boys teams, girls teams. Then also as well, we have box teams that are playing in the Shwegan at four different venues, the men, the girls, the women's. And there's 50 teams that are going to be playing in our community this coming weekend. Mm-hmm. And there's close to 1,000 athletes, uh, young kids, uh, who are going to be here. That's and to me, that's what really what it's all about is promoting is promoting friendships because, yeah. and and fitness and just showing people the 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 truly wonderful lifestyle that we are beautiful beautiful people, Ongoi people, and that mm-hmm. we have so much to share with everyone. Right, and I agree, and and it basically it it highlights what I was talking about earlier about exchanging between different nations and communities. So I, I'm so happy to hear that you guys are doing that this weekend. So if I ask you another question, um, what would you say the benefits are to the individual when you incorporate recreation? You're working with these athletes and you're teaching them rec- um, cultural teachings in the recreation teachings. What do you, how do you think that benefits the individual? Increased knowledge, mm-hmm. confidence. Yeah. And probably a, a deeper they're be, sense. They're better, yeah, they're better understanding, I guess, of themselves. They're, yeah. And I wrote something down, like, it's just like their, their sense of purpose. Like, and, and, and I think to me that's, that's really what it's all about is that it gives them a sense of purpose and direction because everyone plays something for, for a reason. Some of us may have played elite level or professional. Some of us may play recreational but we all get out there for a reason and that's for the overall well-being of ourselves and keep us balanced and to me that's that's one that's one of the key things to help keep uh, our people balanced and and in focus so that's excellent and then that trickles into the community right because if we have healthy individuals who are proud of their culture then that affects the community in a positive way as well right Yes, very, very much so, and, and and I can see that like happening now, like even with all the uh, workshops that we're doing, and 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 even like like partnering up with different groups and uh, across the country, and it's and it's it's just like this whole, it's like a transformation is happening, and it's really wonderful to be part of it. Like a sport was has been very, very integral to to my life, uh, my kids' lives. Uh, family, community, and that's what it's all about is, is building community. And if we can provide that vehicle or that tool to help individuals transform the ways they see things, and I just I just truly believe that we, have, we need to collaborate and communicate mm-hmm. uh, better with one another. And if we can do that, then we're, then we're so much further ahead, I guess, in terms of 
what we really want to see is as a, I'll say as healthy Ongohongi people. Mm-hmm. And I agree 200%, and I think that's why I really liked you when I first met you, because we agree on that. I think that it's time that everybody starts working together. And if you look at the Olympics, the Olympics is the only time where every nation comes together for one cause. And we have to pay attention to that because the answer was right there. And I think what you're doing is amazing, Kevin, because you, you are, um, you're living and breathing your culture and you're sharing it with other nations. And I think that's amazing because you're investing in the youth with, uh, with everything that you're doing. Um, I do have another question, though, that I thought of while you were t- talking. So how sure. do you find um, giving your teachings from your people to other nations? How do I find it? Can you just reference yeah, that yeah. question, I guess, a little better? <laughs> Sorry, I knew what I meant. <laughs> um, well, how do you find they're accepting your teachings? Like from uh, you're, you're working with some Mi'kmaq people with different nations, and how, are they embracing, and, and do they, can they relate, even though you, you have different stories, can they relate to what you're, you're telling them? For sure. I think of the Mi'kmaq community and... and and in the discussions, even with them, they have their own they have their own um their own ball game, like mm-hmm. their own stick ball game. I I can't pronounce it. I wouldn't do justice to pronounce it, but <laughs> that's one of the things that I know the uh, Goose Cap Heritage Center out there in Millbrook is working on, where they're actually going out and providing teachings now, because again, it parallels I guess some of our teachings, but they also have their their own games. And that's one of the things that they're doing is they're actually going out and educating the kids in the elementary schools and the secondary schools about their games. And, and that's really important. And like you see, when we lived out in Chilliwack, B.C., and Salo Nation territory as well, we, we heard that. We shared our games. They shared their games. And even when I was living out there in the whole Fraser Valley, they said, when I think of uh, Squai and Squiala, and, and they they had their own games. And they said, we used to play lacrosse here. And they said, yeah, probably countless other games as well. And like they had their own their own versions, even down in the Europe tribal nation in, in California, Northern California. Like they had their own version of a double ball, stick ball game. So I, I totally believe that it's being embraced and it's being brought back. And that's that's the whole beauty of, of what we do is is that it allows individuals to get in touch with themselves and communities and go out and ask those questions and share those games because and that's what we do like we we incorporate like hoop and pole games hoop and pin games they're not our games per se but if we can even teach them like say well it's snow snake and some of our other games and we can share that and that's and we're just it's a, it's a cultural exchange and it's just wonderful to see Absolutely, and I think it enriches people because you're also uh, honoring other nations by teaching their games. So that that's something that promotes tolerance instead of fighting. We can see how much we're you know the same instead of different, and how um, you know they're just these games were just expressed differently in different nations, but they're they all have the same purpose, right? For sure. Okay. For sure. So I have another question. If you had any advice to give to others about integrating culture into recreation, what would it be? Big question. I guess my advice would be uh, go back and, and talk to the people because if you talk, go back and talk with the people, they they understand everything about the land and the resources and everything that is that that exists within your environment that allowed them to play the games and whatever activities that they needed to do. But we won't do that unless we actually go out and talk to one another. And it's great that now we have modern technology. We have these iPhones, these Blackberries. But I think even in, a, in essence, they don't go far enough because we've become too dependent on some of them now. Mm-hmm. And we have to go back and start knocking on people's doors and start sharing the stories with one another. And that's what I was always, I was led to believe. If you got something to say, my mom taught me this, and you need to get it out and you need to say it. And that's why I really, I'm really truly happy that you actually asked me to participate because communication will break down so many of those different fundamental challenges that we have, I guess, as only people. And I guess as a word of advice just generally is uh, communicate and collaborate with one another. And you'll find, again, that the answers are all out there already. All the medicines, the teachings, they're, they're, they already exist. And, and ultimately, we got to do what makes us happy and love what you do and just have fun doing it. And, and those are to me, just simple recipes for, 
or living a, a healthy and balanced way of life. Yeah, that, that's very valuable advice, so miigwech for all of that. Um, how can people get in touch with you, Kevin, if they want to invite you to their, their territory? Oh, you can call you can call me two two six nine two two nine zero nine seven. I got my BlackBerry everywhere. I talked about technology, but also we have a uh, we have a uh, Facebook page as well. dot com slash Iroquois dot lacrosse dot program, and they can get in touch with me, touch with me that way. Like I say, and it's going to be a hectic next ten days, but I'm totally looking forward to it because, <laughs> like you say, we have close to a thousand athletes coming here to participate and. And some fun activities, and it's and it's awesome because even the girls are going to be doing some wonderful events and promotion, and that's that's what it's all about. I just want to be able to the games. All the games have been good to me over the years, and it's just our way of giving back and trying to help, mm-hmm. like you say, promote physical activity, active living, in, in a good and fun way. Mm-hmm. And that's awesome. And I bet there's going to be a great social too, right? <laughs> Oh, for sure, definitely. Be, and that's true because the Six Nations Ashley Girls Field Lacrosse team are putting on a supper and social at, at the uh, community hall in Six Nations this coming weekend, and, and a lot of the teams are looking forward to that very much so. And and that's that's the whole thing, too, is that we want to also promote the Haudenosaunee women's team who are competing at the World Cup this this weekend, promote our, our community and the wonderful sports facilities built to new a uh, six-lane rubberized track here, our sports field, and it's just we just want to put them to use. Yeah, that's excellent. And thank you so much for sharing all that with us today. I think it was valuable advice to hear uh, what's actually going on and how um, culture is being integrated into recreation live and, and real from uh, from you. So miigwech again for everything that you said. And we're going to put your contact information on the side um, so that everybody can see it. And uh, and I think that's it. Did you have anything else you want to add? No, I just want to say uh, nyawagoa, nyawagoa. Um, uh, many thanks to to uh, to you to uh, for asking me to participate. Uh, I, I'm just I'm just truly honored and, and truly honored to um, be involved in, in, in doing my part and, and to help to help I guess make a difference. And everyone out there who's who's either online or listening, you are making a difference, and and that's and that's really important to uh, to to honor and, and respect that. Mm. Well, yeah, one to you, Kevin, and uh, you know I'm going to be in touch with you. <laughs> We've been talking about uh, doing some stuff together, so um, I look forward to, do, to doing that because I love the way that you uh, communicate your passion and you're there for the right reasons, and, and we need to work together. So I look forward to doing that. Very much so. Yeah, you have yourself a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Okay, miigwech. So I'm going to continue okay. with, uh, with this presentation. Um, that was fabulous. I'm really grateful for Kevin because he's he's living, breathing example of, of what we should all be striving for. And uh, he's got his family, he's got his young kids, and he still gets out there and, and he does it for the youth and he does it for the sport. And uh, he's making a difference. I'm going to continue with the presentation. So aside, one of the ways that you can find some of these people who are promoting culture and recreation is uh, you can do a Google search and you can find a company that is near you or that interests you and you can call them up to see what kind of suggestions they may have. The other thing, you might come across some of the events like what's going on in Kevin's community and uh, don't be shy to give them a call and find out how did you put this together. What were your challenges? What were your solutions? How did you, um, you know, start? And uh, can I have some of the information? And can I call you if I have some questions? So we can't be shy to, to start reaching out to each other. Um, obviously, you want to make sure that uh, the person that you're dealing with is a reputable person. But that's, as we know, pretty easy to find out. You just have to ask a couple of people, and you can get people's um, history pretty easily. Another way that you can integrate culture is uh, you can bring in the medicine wheel. Um, this is something that I do fairly often, and it's very simple. I don't give teachings. I'm not an elder, but I do use it in everything that I do. Um, so what I, I like to do is I have people evaluate their physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual balance and see where they rate and how, you know, and it could be whether it's in 
their day to day or their life in general. And just taking that time to do a self-evaluation can bring us a lot of insight on how we can balance our lives a little bit more. So I do this in just about every workshop or training that I do, and, and people really find value in it. And um, I think it's something that we need to do ongoing as community leaders as well. Because if we're not balanced, it's harder for us to bring about balance into our communities. So regardless of how you choose to do, uh, to do it, to integrate culture into recreation, getting the original people to connect back to our roots and history can only help restore pride and recognition of who Indigenous people are and our role as earth keepers. So I wish you much success in your journey. And as usual, if you have any questions or if you want to have some more information about the services that uh, we offer, Native Way Training Services, or if you want to get in touch with Kevin, uh, please feel free to uh, contact me or anyone that's on this call. I'm going to put my, my, uh, my email on uh, the screen there and uh, so that you can have access to it. And it's, it's more than my pleasure to be able to help support or give ideas to any of you. Um, at this time, I'd also like to invite other people on the call to find out what you guys are doing in your community um, to integrate culture if you have ideas or questions. So if anybody has any question or comment, now's the time. Or if you like the webinar, <laughs> So uh, to unmute your line, I believe it is pound six. OK. Well, I guess I'm going to invite Jennifer. Jennifer, would you like to start the, uh, the tour of the website? Hi, thanks, Isabel. Um, so today, as opposed to doing the Northern Links um, website tour, what we're actually going to do is immediately after um, we're done here, we will be sending out um, a few things. Um, number one, obviously, we'll be sending out Kevin's contact information for anybody who's interested in contacting him for further information. Um, we will be sending out the evaluation link that we ask, again, that you complete. Um, uh, if you do complete it, you do get a chance to win the $25 gift card. Um, and I know that Colin uh, would definitely appreciate that. And additionally, you will get the information for the Northern Links website, how to access all of the previous webinars, um, as well as all the great uh, resources that are on the Northern Links website. And, um, and then you will be given the contact information should you have any questions or concerns the, uh, regarding the website, um, that uh, you can give them a contact or a call or email, and, uh, and they can navigate you through that. Excellent. Thank you so much, Jennifer. So I want to thank everyone again for participating in this webinar. Unfortunately, it's the last of our series, but fortunately you can access them on the Northern Links website anytime that you want. You can share it with your, your colleagues as well. So miigwech um, from Native Way Training Services, and uh, I want to give thanks to Jennifer and Colin and Agnes for um, being part of this, and I, I do, do wish you a great journey. Miigwech. Thanks, Isabel. You're welcome. Yeah.